mother four and asked Bonnie Thaxton if she would lead us in the word of prayer. Chief Chester Brooks, here. Assistant Chief Bonnie Jo Griffith, here. Secretary Annette Ketchum, here. Uh, Treasurer Benita Shea, here. Uh, member Nikki Michael, here. Uh, member Nathan Young, here. And member Michelle Holly, here. Okay, we have 100%. Everybody got the minutes of our last meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve the amendments? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes of the last meeting. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any corrections or additions? We've got more guests tonight than we've seen lately. Would any guest wish to address the council at this time? Nancy? Discussing, 
and give us a chance to put our input into it. I don't like getting up here arguing with you. I don't like that. But I would like to have a little input on what type of business that you guys are doing. And uh, I'm going to stop it right there. Thank you. Are there any other guests? You're up. Um, I was going through the resolutions online, and I found some odd ones. Resolution 2015-11, a resolution of the Tribal Council of a Delaware Tribe of Indians to accept and sign a letter of intent with the Dennis Group LLC and the tribe. There was a vote of three yes, two no, and one abstaining. For a majority vote, you guys have to have a four yes. Um, sure. on, on an abstention is like a uh, doesn't count either way. So it was actually a three to two vote if there was one abstention. That's not true. I found other resolutions like this, and they failed because of that. Okay. It's not a majority vote, because a four is a majority vote. So. Resolution 2016-003, a resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to establish regular meetings every Tuesday evening, 5.30, beginning January 12th, 2016. A three yes, two no, and one abstaining. It's an illegal re resolution. Those meetings are illegal. I do. Well, I guess it could go to court, uh, although uh, this has come up before in council meetings, and an abstention is no vote. Uh, anybody is welcome to take that to court, I guess, and, and argue. There's one more that was just really weird that I found. A resolution of the Tribal Council of the Delaware Tribe of Indians to suspend the charter of the Delaware Enterprise Authority. Resolution 2015-02. There are six yes, one no, and one abstention on it. That's eight votes. There's only seven of you. Who signed it? Nikki. Do other counts or other members in the audience wish to speak? She follows the gentleman. I'm with Nancy on this about uh, not allowing the members to speak. Yes, the Constitution does say that the chief that the Members can join in, in the discussion with the permission of the chief, which uh, you all try to be so transparent that you don't allow the members to speak. Also, on the agenda, it says welcome guests, and guests will be heard. Guess what? We're the governing body. Your tribal members here are the governing body of this tribe, and you call them guests. Uh, chief Tony, I, I hate to argue with you but the entire adult voting membership is a governing body. Amen. The entire adult voting membership is not in this room. So I had some questions I wanted to ask. Well, and when one of them got answered in the newspaper, I was going to ask why our property in Caney hadn't been taken into trust yet. But you explained in there that it was a couple of technicalities that we had to answer. But how about the property in uh, Leavenworth? 
the property in Leavenworth will be attempted to be put in trust also. Has that been a file to be put into trust? It has been attempted to file it to put in trust, but we were denied the ability to, to file it. How could that be? The, well, because Carcieri hadn't been decided yet. But it has been now. They, yes, it has, and uh, we were disinformed, as a matter of fact, last week by uh, the Miami agency that they are going to process both Caney and, well, accept Leavenworth probably within two weeks. They will accept it to send it off straight to Washington, D.C., as it must be. I see. Thank you. Also, um, you know, I, I really think that, that you should uh, reconsider this not letting the tribal members participate in your uh, discussions. I, yeah. Uh, that you're you're relegating your tribal members to guests and they're not guests. They should be allowed to speak. I thought that's what the council uh, meeting was for. So I, I think you need to reconsider that because uh, we have always allowed that. And that if the audience is too unruly, that's something else. But otherwise, they should be allowed to participate in the discussion. And also, I uh, had a problem with uh, calling Robert's rules into order when uh, the Constitution usurps the Robert's rules. And I was just a little curious if the audience is only allowed to speak at this moment. A couple of times, your counsel have tried to speak, and they had a gag order put on them by Robert's rules. And so I was curious as to when the, is your counsel allowed to speak? Do they speak now when, at the first of the meeting like other tribal members? The council don't be allowed to speak at any time. No, I've, I've heard that shut down twice. Yeah. In fact, the last meeting, there was a big hullabaloo going on about, you can't speak without a, a, a motion. And, and, and that came out of Robert's rules. So. That's something that's in Robert's rules, yes. But it's not in our Constitution. No, it's not in our Constitution, and our Constitution does not specifically override well, is that right? with any is, language either. Is, is it right to not allow your counsel to speak? No, I, I, don't, think it's don't, a, I don't think speak. it's right to not allow somebody to speak, whether they're on the council or out there in the audience. I do think that if the audience wants to try to rule, you'll have to get elected. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear other comments? Yes. I have not been to a council meeting in quite some time. And it's nobody's fault other than my own. But listening to the comments and reading comments about the way this council is behaving. I'm appalled, but that's me, that's my opinion. Um, I am sure each and every one of you were elected to represent the people of our tribe. Absolutely. Okay, so I agree with my sister and with Paula that our comments should not be relegated to issues 
prior to them being discussed. Resolutions before we were able to make a comment upon each resolution as it was presented. And now apparently, due to an, a ruling by you last week, that we would only be able to talk at this particular time. Um, I disagree. I just want to let you know that I disagree. The other question that I had was this property in Leavenworth. When did we get property in Leavenworth and for what purpose was this pr property purchased? Is it being considered for a casino? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. It's being considered for a casino. It has not been purchased. An option has been purchased on the property. Okay, I heard, and this is gossip, I heard that this property was being considered for a casino, and the person who was going to purchase the casino bought it, and then we are buying it from that, per from that person. Is that true? Yes or no? Well, no, it's not true because the person you're talking about, it's called uh, River Trails. Okay. A company. Okay. So uh, they have it? not purchased any land. They have purchased an option okay. to buy that so land. Okay. So it was not purchased. It was not. How am I going to put this? Um, what I'm trying to say is the the, per, the land itself was the land itself was not purchased by another Delaware tribal member with the option of the Delaware tribe purchasing it from that person. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm trying to say, was it? No. Okay. Not I, at all. I'm sorry. I, it, it, actually, the option was purchased with money that come from River Trails. Okay. But not from the Delaware tribe. No. Okay. That's what I needed to know. So thank you. Let me ask all of you members out there. Just about everybody in out there at the main. All of you raise your hand if you'd like to be able to speak when any motion is being discussed by this council. Everybody that wants that privilege, raise your hand. And will somebody that can see count? don't care when you speak. Chief. I don't say any. Anybody say any? Chief, Chief Brooks, can we can we um, at least acknowledge um, for the for the audio footage that the people that did raise their hands were the adult voting membership of the guests that are here? The only ones that did not raise their hand were the ones that were that are uh, non-tribal members. No, there was some who didn't raise their hand. No, raise my hand. Oh, okay, so there was one person. No, no, no. Oh, there's another person. There's another person. There's another person. There's another person. So two. This looks, a lot of the staff didn't raise their hand. Yeah. Yeah. Who are Delaware? Okay. Everybody in this room recognizes that that's my call according to our Constitution. So I'll tell you what. 
if you wish to speak. while we're in discussion about a resolution or even a motion, I will recognize you for a maximum of three minutes. so long as I'm the chief of this tribe. However, if any of you, if any of you wish to attack any of my council members, if any of you wish to bring false statements or accusations of commission of a crime, we will immediately take you into executive session and you can make whatever accusations in executive session you so wish. Has anybody got a problem with that? Nancy. If, um, are you going to be the one to uh, call for the executive session, or can the person that say get an all a hassle? Well, can uh, they call for the executive They can ask for one, and it'd be smart on their part if they're uh, throwing out uh, accusations of of uh, a criminal nature, it'd be smart not to say something in public. But, but yeah, I'll, but we'll go into executive session anytime any council member or any member wants to. But you're not going to make any accusations in open council meetings. That fair? Chief Captain. Looking at the uh, looking at the uh, Constitution, which I have here, uh, the amended version, November first, two thousand and eight. I think that's the latest one out and it uh, specifically says and I, and I quote which you have already made reference to the supreme authority rests with the individual 18 years and older I would I would uh, one of the things that I would recommend uh, that they have to be a voting member 18 years and older to be able to speak I mean, if they want to Okay. Okay. Um, you repeat that now. Okay. Your job is tough as it is. I know how tough it is, uh, and you can hear all kinds of comments one way or the other concerning that. And you need to hear from the adult voting members that have something to say. Don't. You know, and I'm not trying to, Anna is right in, in her comments, but uh, I think that to me, it's, 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 it's the suggestion is to, you want to hear from the adult voting members of the, of, of, of the uh, tribe. Uh, one of the things that I did want to uh, mention is that uh, in Article 3, the rights of the members, and it says the rights of the members of the Delaware tribe to hold religious beliefs, speak and write freely, okay? And to, uh, and the right of the members to assemble and petition their government 
shall not be disturbed. As I'm making reference to, as I'm sure that you already know that, is that when, when you put a gag order on certain individuals, that is not, we operate under the Constitution, but we are a federally recognized tribe, okay? We have, we are operating under our own Constitution, okay? It says specifically that it's not, not, not in conflict with our Constitution, the government, which we are not. But, uh, but I, I think that, to me, I, I agree with Nancy and all the individuals that, for, that stepped up here, that you need to hear from, from them. And I would recommend, Chief, that you give them the time to, to express their, their beliefs and, and, uh, and your right in relationship to not giving them 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and so forth, to go on, 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 on. It, that you have a time frame and you work within that time frame. Okay? Thank you. Uh, well, uh, can I, a point of order, uh, could you tell me, was that Article 3? What did you, I want to be sure I get the right. It's Article 3 of the Constitution. Uh, article, you, you've got it. Article 3, Section 1. Okay. Uh, section 1, yeah. Well, Article 3 is, is the rights of the members. Thank you. Anna, your, your uncle just uh, absolutely not recognize you, but I'm going to recognize you anyway. I'm very sorry, but I forgot to introduce my friend, Audrey Gay. She's currently serving as Operation Eagle Pow Wow Princess, and next year she will be our Delaware Pow Wow Princess. Not as friends. Well, I mowed the lawn today. It's pretty hot. Pretty hot. Anyway, this is just some information uh, I want to share with you. Uh, currently, uh, being a political hound, I follow the news quite a bit. And in the news currently, there's one person by the name of Elizabeth Warren who has claimed to be Cherokee Delaware ancestry, but she cannot prove it. Cherokees have made a statement uh, addressing that issue that they have found nothing in their records that uh, indicates that she's Cherokee. And I'm sure the same thing would happen here. But in the 2000, I was the head of the census office in Tulsa, over 800 people, and I did encounter many, many stories of the same nature where there are members of their families have told them they're part Delaware or part Cherokee, but they have no way to prove it. And I was just wondering if this tribe, our tribe, would be interested in trying to respond to that. And in fact, perhaps uh, reach out and make some kind of connection to this woman. She is uh, very highly politically motivated. She has, uh, exhibits high upper potential mobility. And it would be very good for this tribe to make friends like that in Washington. Uh, she's uh, very, very well known in Oklahoma, where she was born and raised, and very familiar with Cherokee and Delaware people. And it's just a passing thought, but uh, for our future endeavors for this tribe, we need to make as many connections and political friends as we can in higher places. So I would highly suggest and pass it on to you if you would consider that. I, uh, I've actually uh, heard the same thing about a month ago, and I will readily admit that probably four years ago, when uh, Elizabeth Warren was confronted that that she was not a, a member of any recognized tribe. She asked the Cherokees um, for help, I guess, in, in 
show him that she was, and I, and I don't know the details of it, but the Cherokees kind of blew her off, or sent, they actually sent some people east to, to prove that she wasn't a member of the Cherokees. Back four years ago, I've been told Elizabeth Warren's staff called our tribal registration and our uh, people in registration couldn't, couldn't find any ancestor on her. But I, I'm not sure of any details of how deep they look. I'm also not sure that uh, Elizabeth Warren could possibly be a Delaware and, and, and never enrolled in the Cherokee Nation. I don't know. But the only reason I mentioned it is I tried to call her office uh, both in Boston and in Washington, D.C about three weeks ago when uh, Mr. Trump uh, started attacking her again about the Indian ancestry. And I, I, I got the recording in both places and I, I told them who I was, that I was chief of the Delaware tribe and I had nothing to do with news media and that I had nothing to do with national politics and was simply calling to see if we could be of any assistance to Elizabeth Warren in proving her ancestry. They've never called me back. Possibly because they're afraid that we might be on a witch hunt against Elizabeth Warren. But yeah. Well, that's, that's good information. I'm not. I'm not saying that she is a Delaware tribal member. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. recall the uh, tribe was contacted by somebody looking into her ancestry, but I probably, I doubt it was from her. It's more from probably from her opposition trying to probably. Her. Yeah. But uh, to get to. Uh, Elizabeth, he might try going to a back channel, perhaps through Ben Campbell Night Horse, if he's still, living. <laughs> you know, work that angle, because uh, you can always uh, do the uh, connections that way much easier than uh, try to go to the front door sometimes, and people appreciate that more because it's out of quiet. But uh, that's good. Now I know the Comanches did adopt. Uh, who was that Brad? Oh, Johnny. Johnny Depp. Uh, all the same, whatever. <laughs> Adoption possibilities. Think about it. Thank you. Can I can I ask that our uh, enrollment director come up here to address the questions that were posed? We did look into Elizabeth Warren's background several years ago, and um, if if requested by the chief's office, I'm sure Chris and I can can make your report. I would not feel comfortable. Um, in, in open council meeting discussing that. But if the chief's office would like to know, uh, there's an idea to report to you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional tribal members who wish to speak? Chief of Brooks, I, I think this is a perfect time for me to uh, speak. Uh, since I'm speaking on behalf of the membership of the uh, Delaware Tribe, and uh, today I uh, am submitting or letting, letting you know that uh, the three initiative position, uh, petitions have been uh, ratified and verified, signed it. And I'd like to call for that uh, in 45 days. My responsibility as the secretary is to call for 45 days from now, which would be August the 19th, to uh, have a, a referendum election to vote on the on uh, uh, Mr. Young, uh, Ms. Griffith, and yourself for uh, 
uh, for removal. I just want that to be a matter of the record tonight. But the clock's ticking. According okay. to the Constitution, it's the chief who calls the election. Absolutely, that's what I said. No, I, I was calling the chief to do it. So, uh, it's time. The, uh, there's actually three initiative petitions. There's I three, find. exactly. And you've already verified the signatures and yes. membership. Yes, the membership, the uh, members that signed the petitions have been verified, and uh, <clears throat> and we have the the hundred plus names, and uh, uh, that's my next step right? is to let you know. Do uh, have copies been made to these three hundred? Or plus, three hundred plus. Uh, I have the copies. Pages. I do. I have the copies and the originals, and uh, they're in safekeeping. I don't want them to disappear or something happen to them. But um, if anybody wants to look at them with me, I'll bring them. Or if you want to set the copies, I thought maybe I just have them uh, put into the computer so I can follow them. What I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't say that uh, they're not they're not. Uh, we're not making a public or anything like that. That's never been done. So, but it's just that it's time to call for the the, the uh, in 45 days the referendum vote of our people. Uh, that is not necessarily the case, uh, Secretary Captain. Well, that's what the, the Constitution uh, says. The Constitution says that upon a two-thirds vote of the Tribal Council, uh, such initiative petition can uh, terminate the office of an elected council member. And that's one way. The other one is the initiative process. Yes. Either way, it could do that if it's a valid petition. Yeah, it's a valid petition. There's three valid petitions. And that that's, is... Uh, that's actually not for this council to decide. That would be a question of the tribal court. No, Chet, it is a... Uh, Chief uh, Brooks, it's a, it is for you to call a referendum vote. That is all it says to do, and we've done it many other times in the past, and it's just a matter, uh, maybe you don't want to. I know that uh, Chief, uh, Chief Joe didn't want to, and he just, he, he just kept stalling. I know, stalling. he went to the tribal court. And he didn't I go to court. Back. Of course he did. I don't ever recall him going to court. He didn't have to go, he didn't have to, go to court. If it's in, within 45 days of an election, we take it out to a referendum. And the, and the logical of that is that then anybody that wants to apply for these positions can apply for them at the regular at the regular meeting in November. Secretary Ketchum is absolutely correct. I'm sitting here looking at our constitution, which each one of us have a copy of in our packet today, and I believe our guests have copies also. I'm looking at Article Seven under Vacancy which particularly details um, what actions will take place once an initiative petition has been filed and validated. I, I'm not arguing that the Constitution says that if an initiative petition has been presented, the chief must call an election within 45 days I'm simply saying that the petition may not be valid legally. And, and in what reference, in what way are you speaking? What way would it not be valid if the uh, enrollment department uh, looked at all the names and all the information that was on the petition and ratified it? It may not be a legal petition besides the signatures. And, and how would that be? Uh, you've got the Constitution. I do. 
do. In front of you. Go to page 8, article 10. If you read it, it will say recall slash removal from office. Section 1. If any elected member of the Delaware Tribal Government is convicted of a felony or crime which involves dishonesty, his office shall be considered forfeited upon two-thirds vote of the Tribal Council by resolution or by two-thirds of votes cast by eligible voting membership. Well, this uh, initiative petition, or petitions, all three of them, are asking for elected tribal officials, three of them, including me, to be recalled or removed from office. And none of us have been convicted of a felony or misdemeanor that, or other crime that involves dishonesty. That's two different things you're talking about. If somebody had committed a felony, Yes, we would go to that particular area and remove them from office. However, if then the people, if the people at large, the uh, the uh, our, our our people at vote, our voters all around the country, if they want to get a hundred signatures, they can bring it to an, another way and make an initiative that they want to to have a vote on something, and that's what they're that's what's happened. Chet, you know that. This I mean, is our governing body. No, I don't know that. Yes. <laughs> I know what our Constitution says. That's what it says. I, mean, it, I know exactly what it says. It's a good point. Point, point of order. She's right. Point, point of order. we got too many people talking. We don't have the floor. Okay. I, the voting membership's rights to initiate and pass legislation for the benefit of the Delaware No doubt about it. Okay, then what's, there's no argument you're going to call. Well, right? except there is an argument. Their reasoning for asking for this is invalid. Oh, well, that's making a value judgment of the rest of the people, Chad. You no, know, it's not. Yes, it is, because they have the right to make the initiative the, petition. The adult voting membership of the Delaware Tribe of Indian Secretary Ketchum does not have the rights of a court of law and have the right to convict any of us of a felony or misdemeanor that involves dishonesty, which we did not commit while in office. Chief Brooks, if I may, please, I would like to interject and add uh, for clarification. What you're what you're depicting here is something completely different than what this initiative petition from our from our voting membership has initiated. Um, you're comparing apples to oranges. No, I don't believe um, from the petitions that I've seen anyone was was uh, accusing you of committing a felony. I'm just trying to clarify here. You're you're speaking on one matter, and and these initiative petitions are on another matter. Um, the initiative petitions are full of language accusing three individuals of crimes that they have not been convicted of. Just, just Leslie. I 
just wanted some clarification on the wording in the Constitution because actually this portion, I was just looking at with the intent of submitting a resolution at the next council meeting that I hoped could be taken into consideration for the one after that. So particularly, I was reading the initiative petition, so I want to make sure that I understand. The article that we talked about just a little bit ago, seven vacancy, that reads, um, any vacancy which may occur in the tribal council because of death or resignation shall be filled by a majority vote. The next section, which we're, which we're discussing now, which I had read earlier, and I'll just tell you what I thought that meant. Initiative position, uh, petitions. The members of the Delaware tribe reserve unto themselves the power to initiate and pass resolutions and ordinances and to change or modify resolutions and ordinances enacted by the Tribal Council according to rules and procedures set forth in the bylaws. So when I read that, I understood that I as a Delaware Tribal member have the right to initiate and pass resolutions and ordinances and to change or modify those resolutions and ordinances enacted by the Tribal Council. So that lets me know I have the right to petition to change ordinances or bylaws, correct? Is yes. that right? Sure. Which is why I thought, okay, I'm gonna write a resolution and present it. So, it's not actually talking about a petition because it says I have the right to petition an ordinance or a change in bylaws. But I think we're reading this in a sense of an, a petition has been received that we have a right to an actual petition. And I think that those words are getting confused. So just read it in that light for the language for a moment, because the next one, amendments, it says this constitution and bylaws may, have been, may be amended by two-thirds majority. It shall be the duty of the chief to call for election for the purpose of amending the constitution and bylaws when. So now our constitution is talking about what does the chief have to do once those resolutions or bylaws have been submitted by a member. Then the petition signed by at least 100 registered voters setting forth the full text and proposed amendments, amendments to the bylaws or the resolution that has been passed by the Tribal Council, which was mentioned in that previous paragraph. So the Secretary verifies all those folks, and then the Tribal Council passes a resolution by a two-thirds majority vote. So then the Tribal Council then passes that. That's why I read that. How do you read it? Are you addressing me, Leslie? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Okay, I would like, yes. Just to clarify, since you just pointed at me. Um, I'm sorry, you were just making direct eye contact with me and shaking your head, so. Well, the and that is my understanding with this petition. There has been 100 signatures. From what you were stating previously, if you wanted to bring a, a resolution to the floor, that would be during um, general council time. If we had a, if we had a quorum of 100 um, voting members, then at that point in time, a resolution by a, a tribal member could be brought from the floor for consideration by the council at that time. At the, right, okay. that at is the general I, meeting. Yes, now my understanding um, and, and the legal interpretation from what I have been, um, the legal interpretation I've been given, provided, is this particular section two, um, paragraph A, is the initiative petitions do require a hundred signatures of the voting membership which, to my knowledge, those three petitions that we are having this discussion about currently do have 100 validated and verified signatures, which is validated by our enrollment department. Okay, I guess I'm just confused because when I read that, I read that it's a petition to change bylaws or resolutions that have already been passed by council, not an actual petition because, and the reason I, that I think I'm understanding it that way is because it uses the verbiage bylaws and, and resolutions, and that's the member's right to petition. So I guess I'm just confused with that verbiage. Well, and Leslie, you bring up a really good point, um, pointing out the am ambiguity yeah. of this of this constitution that we are um, governing ourselves under at this right. time. There's a lot. Because yes, there is a lot of language in here that is confusing and and not black and white. It's not very clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do any other drop?
honorable members wish to throw in their comments. Chief Brooks? Yes. I wish to be recognized, but not on this subject matter. It's something completely different. So if you want to get this conversation completed, but I, I would like to make a statement to the council. Well, you know what? I'll You're recognized. Uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, we're, not, we're still, we're still on this other, we're, well, we're on this other subject. He said he would bow out if we're I not I just recognized the tribal member, which I promised I would do. Well, do whatever you want to do. The BIA can decide it for us if you want us to do that. I think our people are perfectly capable of deciding our own problem. They call for the election. Curtis. Thank you, Chief. I probably should have brought this up before this other discussion. But I do. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chief. Curtis Zenega here. I'd like to take off my hat as the director of the Department of Family and Children's Services and put on my hat as a board member for the Lenape Center. And uh, just state for the record that on June the 17th, in this very room, we had the event where we honored Jim Mentor and his remarkable career working with the Delaware tribe and the Lenape people in history, language, and culture. We had a number of individuals, uh, many of you, Chief, uh, Assistant Chief uh, Bonnie Jo, uh, Benita, and Annette, you were, you were here, uh, and other folks here in the audience. I thought it was a lovely evening. I know Jim appreciated it a great deal. I want to thank the Tribal Council uh, for the gesture they made uh, in recognizing uh, Jim. Uh, also, uh, thanks to uh, Mary and the kitchen staff for their cooperation and support that we put on this event. Uh, overall, it was a very successful event. We actually got national news coverage in Indian country today, just last week. So uh, it all turned out well, and I just wanted to say one issue in a uh, on behalf of my other two board members and uh, to thank you all uh, for that evening and I hope, hope we also raised about $2,500 uh, all of which came directly to the tribe did not pass through my organization um, and so uh, we hope that that um, uh, kind of primes the pump for more money to come in to support our language fund and our language efforts and um, again uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for being a part of that evening. We thank you, Curtis, for the Lenape Foundation arranging it. Chief, may I ask that we take a small break? Um, Bonnie Thaxton's birthday is tomorrow, and they have cake and punch back there for her, and Mary had asked if we if we had a chance to take a break, if we could, to celebrate with I don't know, where did Bonnie go, Carolyn? Oh, is she still there? Okay, I can't see her. Bonnie's there. And so before we do, I think we should all, she'll, she'll be a heartwarming 93 tomorrow. So I think she deserves a special birthday acknowledgement from all of us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bonnie. Happy birthday to you. Recess. There's a picture board back there, and there's also Betty Boo, who's now uh, goes to Haskell.
Yes. I think that's the older man. Amazing. I uh, assume we need a, a motion and a second to also move. Do I hear a second? All in favor of the motion to uh, honor the election board chairman's request to uh, place Janan Alderman on the election board, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Let the record show that uh, Janan Alderman is added to the election board unanimously. I believe uh, at least Alan Barnes uh, has a report. So you want it to coincide with the 18-month rolling lease? Is yes, that what you're saying? That, that would be my suggestion. Okay. So in the event that the Tribal Council makes any decisions in the future uh, to terminate that lease, at least it would be on the same. It would coincide on the same thing. So we just need to rework. Your recommendation would be to rework that sentence where it commence on August 1st and continue as an 18-month rolling lease? Mm -hmm. That's what I would, would ask uh, or mention that you might consider. And then we'll do that back to the lease. But they did, uh, <clears throat> but they did offer, or, or it has, uh, to 
uh, commence on August 1st, 2016. And I'm sure that I would presume they would be agreeable with that. In terms of questions out of the council. Uh, I want to ask is uh, the Pines, are they going to live there? Did they, did they say that or not say that or what? I, in the lease, it does allow, it does allow them to sublet it. I have, uh, Alan, I think that uh, proposal on their part also included uh, maintaining the property, didn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, which we're currently handling handling that and uh, if I can find that real quick. Chief Brooks, I have a question um, just for clarification also. On the um, agenda, are we now, we're under report still. We're not on new business under the Lawrence property attachment. We didn't skip over reports, correct? We're still under well, it's basically new business? I mean, we're still under reports, correct? We haven't skipped on to new business. Are there uh, are there other uh, travel employees that have reports to give? Well, I actually have a question for for uh, our travel manager, um, not regarding the Lawrence property, which is our next line item. Um, but I would like to ask what uh, if there's some updates you can provide on the vacancies that we have uh, within our. Um, Travel offices, the IT position, um, the EPA position that we're looking to fill part time, um, the position in our accounting department. Can we? Pro can you provide an update regarding those vacancies? Well, I'll, I'll do my very best. Uh, as a matter of fact, the IT uh, interviews have been completed, and tomorrow afternoon, why? Mike Taylor, Human Resources, uh, Gene Lewis, and myself will we'll go over uh, the recommendations and an offer will be made following our meeting tomorrow. Uh, the receptionist slash move to the, uh, uh, the accounting department housing finance clinic, uh, that has also been done and will be discussed also tomorrow. And what will occur there is actually as we we hire a, re a receptionist to replace our existing receptionist, then we'll actually be filling two positions because our current receptionist, Angela uh, Krebs, will be taking the housing uh, position. Uh, as in, in accounting? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that's, I think it's going to be uh, housing financial, which will be out of the accounting office soon under Gene Lewis's direction. Uh, let's see, there's so the IT, and then the receptionist, and then the environmental protection, the interviews have uh, been set up, as the way that I understand it, but we, we, we gave our priority to the IT department. We wanted to get that position filled as soon as we could. And so we, put, we kicked that to the front. We should have a, be able to make an offer on it tomorrow. And the EPA decision will be done. Right. As soon as we as soon as we get these three done, why well, then the EPA and then we also have the museum director that we're looking at too. And okay. then doesn't Curtis have an opening? And, oh, right. He's left the way he said. Right. <laughs> and not to forget the child family services opening. Uh, what position is that? Financial uh, specialist. Yeah, financial oh, specialist. who let, did did um, Crystal Crystal leave? That is correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, and Alan, just for clarification too, we are uh, we are moving forward with seeking a part-time uh, EPA person to fill that position because per our requirements with the TOC OK2 position, we are required um, with our, our 8A to transition Jimmy over to a full-time status within you, a certain time frame. So we are on exactly, track with that. You bet. We are on track with that. We did, <clears throat> we did go ahead and uh, we actually had the EPA position that we were uh, 
we hadn't really at the top of the list until we knew we better get an IT person in. So Mike just couldn't do both. So anyway, we hopefully we'll have those two and actually fill three positions really. Two hires and then one in total. Okay, thank yep. you. has awarded our language program $29,000 to make improvements to the Lenape Talking Dictionary. Um, I also want to announce and make it for the record that I am still working on the Lenape Talking Dictionary for no pay. How much money did you get for it? $29,000. Okay, $29,000 for the Talking Dictionary. National Science Foundation. That's Jim's grant that has that been funded as that works. Okay. And if you guys notice that uh, you can't hear anybody speaking, you know, you can get on the computer and you can hear our elders speaking, but you can't get it on your phone. So that's what the updates are going to cover is trying to make it updated for technology. Um, and also, uh, I guess you should probably stay in kind. I'm not saying I'm not, you know, I'm not getting paid for it, but it's an in kind contribution. As far as the, uh, <clears throat> as far as what you need to do uh, regarding uh, providing me instruction on how to handle the residential lease, what I will leave that with you. Uh, could I could I ask a question? Sure. Can uh, so these reports need to go into reports, and then what you just that other report that you gave about the Pine family needs to go into new business. I guess so. So yes, okay. yeah, yes, I'm, I'm going to so, a little bit. I'm going to so note that. Yeah. yeah. And, and since we're, uh, I didn't have any other questions. Okay, can I go now? <laughs> well, I had one other report, report. before we go. Uh, I think that the. Uh, matter that we were discussing about the petition, uh, initiative petition, is under should have been under reports maybe instead of letting it be an open session. So we'll, can I, I want to resume that chat, chat, chat uh, chief at this point. And uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to remind, it, remind everyone is that in Article 3 it says that the right to petition will never be taken away from the membership. And therefore, the petitions, the petitions come under that Article 3. And um, based on that, and remember, I'm the secretary. I'm not the uh, carrier of the petition or anything else, but it's my du duty now. And I don't want to be dismissed by, by pointing it out, but I need to, we need to move on with that because that's what I'm supposed to do. So can you? Uh, 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 the secretary, uh -huh. I, I don't think anybody is arguing that the people have a right to petition, petition our government. What we're arguing is that their petition is unconstitutional. It's asking for something to be done that's not covered by our Constitution. Uh, in, in, in real bluntly, it's a matter to be decided by the tribal court. The court interprets our Constitution. Well, I think we have some case law. If you said your brother went to tribal court to get a deci decision made when he had a petition that was similar to this for recall, 
and they went to court, and then the court apparently said, yes, he has to, he will go on with the petition because he got recalled. Can we assume that? I mean, so it's already been decided once by our tribal court that a person could be recalled by petition. So why do we, we don't need to do it again, Chief. Well, but the, the question is, is the way our Constitution is worded puts recall slash removal from office in the same title and same sentence. And how does that differ than what happened to the uh, former Mr. Uh, Chief Brooks? Uh, it, it differs uh, solely in the difference that we have a different tribal court now than we did then. But we have the same case law. If it's good case law. If it's yeah. good case and it's law. Good, it was obviously it was good case law because he was recalled. It, Chief Masti, I believe though the only person that had any law education on that judicial board that heard that wrote against it. And the, the two judges who had no law education voted to remove it. I, I find that very irrelevant to the discussion here. If you're talking case law, it's Totally relevant, and, uh, and we are not. We are not the um, judicial system. We are the legislative uh, so arm of this that's tribe. Absolutely, Which, what we're saying. So, are we going? So, to, Secretary Ketchup is withholding, is upholding her duties by announcing this. That there has yeah, been three petitions. Sure. I'm still, if I may, please still continue to speak and finish this thought. There are, there are three petitions that have 100 validated signatures on them. Are you going to uphold your responsibilities per our Constitution by calling for an election within 45 days? I will if the tribal court orders me to, certainly. And at that, what point in time will that be? Uh, whenever it gets to court. And who do you suppose is going to write the uh, court thing? I have no clue who, but you mean who's going to file it in yes. court? I will if you want me to. Should I file it against you? I, or, I or, the, or, or the <laughs> petitioner? <laughs> well, who did your brother file it against? Because he, he maintained he didn't know who did it. He, well, I don't know who my brother did. Well, see, I don't even know if your brother went to court with him. Does anybody know? This audience. Well, certainly, Paul Pachone, Chief Pachone. No. I think so, but I certainly don't know. I we never heard that case. It she was, happened. yeah, she was on the court at the time, and it was never heard. So, I, it's, I think maybe, maybe, maybe Joe had forgotten or something. I don't know. Well, it uh, was a loophole. That's what he wanted to do. All anybody saying is that. It's unconstitutional. The court will be approached with a petition from probably three of us that says that. Well, now, we're not saying that uh, filing an initiative petition is unconstitutional. Of course it's not. It's, it's having a petition that asks for something to be done that's unconstitutional. How? It's, I don't see that it's unconstitutional. Well, we, we can debate this all night, but that's why we have a court. Let them decide. Yeah, if the court decides, you're people, right. We don't people, have to live with it. No, the people were the ones who asked for it. They're supposed to have their day to, to have their initiative. That's what it says, that they won't be blocked. And now you're trying to block it by saying the court has to decide it. I'm not and trying to block anything. Well, it I'm says 100 I'm telling you I won't take it to court. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, we're not making it proper. Right. Yeah. 
and the right of the members to assemble and petition their government shall not be disturbed. You are disturbing. It's not being disturbed. You're disturbing the petition's it. petition's there, and I've said it. If the court tells me to call the election, I will. Point of privilege. Well, how about if the petition tells you to call it? I think that the petition is unconstitutional, Secretary Chatham. It wasn't unconstitutional when she was trying to do it to me. What, what do you think about that? Nobody was trying to throw you out of office. Oh, I asked her. She did it. I did. And I found out since then that what I did was unconstitutional. <laughs> Well, see, this this makes a fallacy. It makes a signature. Okay. You know what? How appalled is Susan Cade right now? I want to know. She was so appalled, and she hasn't well, been here. Now she's sitting here getting appalled, and I'm getting appalled. What's she getting appalled at? How about the Thank unprofessional displays of behavior yeah. that we're all that, 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 that People want to do something, and they they're uh, disallowed because. Uh, Chief says so. Uh, Point of order. Can we move on, Chief? Well, of course you want to move on. It, you, there's about you guys. I mean, it's, well, it's as clear as it's as clear as it can be. No, it's not about us guys. It's about our whole tribe, and that. We don't have a whole tribe. Not the petition. The petition is about you three. Yeah. It's well, about we us don't want to get the I'm petition. Just the secretary. That's but right. the, whether or not it's constitutional is about our whole. Well, I can and read, and you can read too, and you know what it says. So you're just a loophole. Oh, Bonnie, you know what? You tried to take Paul to court, and you so you said they found out that she couldn't do it. Well, too bad. You know, you try to wreck somebody's life, but you're going to fight, fight, and fight, and fight to keep from wrecking YouTube's life. That's what it sounds like. Hard to quarrel with you now. Yeah, it is. Uh, I agree that the court may be getting a little out of hand. To address on the different subject. Chief, on a different yes. subject. <laughs> I need to. Okay, no. there. I need to ask Alan. I'm sorry about the conversation you all having, but I need to ask Alan, and maybe you know, did we get an offer from the Pine family over a million dollars? Uh, to pay for that land up there, or what? What is that no, about? The I would of... hope that you would refrain from voting on this, uh, the leasing this out until you find out whether you want to sell it to them or not. Now, well, now that's what I heard. I Chief Ketchum, yeah, we we did get a letter of intent from them, and it basically is they want to change from that rolling lease to a five-year lease okay. with an option to buy, but there are no dollars. Attached thought, to the option. I thought there was a million dollars. A million three and that they want the option to buy, but the offer is not on the table right now for a million three. Okay, okay. I mean, if they did, I'd be voting in a heartbeat. Yeah, right. But well, that's, that's not I, in I, the I, letter of intent. I think uh, Annette should have it in her packet. Okay, okay. That's the reason I asked right. the question. If it was, uh, since there's so much controversy about that piece of property up there, right. then. <laughs> And the Pine family wanted to repurchase Hey, it. if they wanted to repurchase so, so. at 1.3, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. but, not well, anyway, five year, but not a five-year lease. Yeah. And well, they can't yeah, do I mean, anything with it for five years. In effect, they wanted a, a five-year option for no pay, no additional payment. For no no money down. Yeah. I mean, to yeah. me, you yeah. got to buy an option. You can make that decision. Yeah. I just wondered okay. if there was. But yeah, it was. not like you said, and that's coming. So, I have a question on the same subject of uh, are the Pine family going to live in that house or are there intentions to sublet that? I believe sublet it. Okay, and for how much and could we not have asked for somebody to rent it at that price? Amen. And have that money come to our tribe instead of going to them? Amen. Yes, go ahead. And we have been in contact with a property management person in Lawrence, and they say this is a really bad time to try to lease. So to me, 
it's better we get $1,200 than nothing if we have to wait six months to lease it or something. We tried to lease it through uh, uh, KU for visiting professors and things, but they weren't interested. So. for the sod farm per month, 
in discussions that I've had with uh, Teresa Schmidt, uh, who is independent property manager that we contacted regarding finding someone to lease this residence and also to get what we could find out what the market would bear. In a most recent conversation that I had with her, which was today, before coming to the meeting, she said that she highly recommended that we uh, proceed with this $1,200 a month offer because she didn't think that she would be able to do any better than that. Plus, in the uh, in this lease, uh, as far as the sublet is concerned, one of the things that uh, that you need to be able to be clear upon is the next door neighbors are the Pine family. Within this lease, they're going to eliminate an expense uh, of maintaining the property. They will mow the property, they will keep the property up. You probably couldn't find a, a better uh, lesser than the Pine family because they are living right next door. So as far as being comfortable with uh, with whom they were to sublet it out to, I, I would not have any problem as that was previously their family home. So they have, you know, a great interest in it not only being next door neighbors. That's actually a year ago, uh, in fact, just about a year ago that I started as a tribal operations manager. That house has sat vacant for a year. We just simply cannot continue, regardless of what a rent is. Everyone here knows what a vacant home <coughs> does uh, as far as deterioration is concerned. We need to get someone in that house to take care of it. Uh, and I'm sure, and I, I think I can certainly recommend that the Pine family, if they were to sublet it, the people that they sublet it to would be responsible adults and a responsible family. Plus, twelve hundred bucks a month. Uh, not just anyone's going to be moving in there anyway. So that would be that would be my comment on it. Other than the fact that uh, uh, the only reason I recommended or suggested, and it's for the tribal council to direct me as to how to proceed. But I do feel like we need to proceed. Uh, we've let that house sit vacant too long. It's a beautiful home. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, it doesn't deserve to be vacant. Um, as far as uh, the 18-month lease is concerned, certainly you know, uh, as far as our tribal membership is concerned, we know that currently there is a USDA agricultural planning grant uh, that we have several uh, departments uh, the KU, the University of Kansas, Kansas State University, uh, Douglas County, the City of Lawrence, USDA, Haskell. Haskell University, thank you. We have all of that conglomerate, if you will, that has been approved a planning grant uh, for the future use and development of that property agriculturally plus a cultural center. That's what the, uh, you know, that's what they're working on now as far as, uh, you know, representing the Delaware tribe. <clears throat> the only reason that I, the only reason I suggested uh, making this particular residential lease 18 months because of the fact you're all aware that there is an 18 month rolling lease with the agricultural part I presumed maybe should or should not have that if we kept them both 18 months why then at the time that we gave if we do give a notice then they would simply coincide so that's kind of the way that I want to present it to you Thank you. Thank you.
Well, somebody make a motion on the subject. Are we moving on to the next? Have we moved on to new business already? Are we still in the reports? It's all mixed up together. It is all mixed up, yes. And I, I will make it. I want to unmix this, okay, when I write the minutes, okay? <laughs> For your easy reading. <clears throat> Under new business, I will make a motion that we approve the residential lease with the change from the terms and ask Alan Barnes to work with the Pine family and get it renegotiated to an 18 month lease, rolling lease, to coincide with that on the farm. Do I hear a second? There's no second. This motion dies for lack of a second. I'll second it. <laughs> Discussion. I just want to clarify. So we're voting on amending the or updating the lease that we currently have, just modifying it to match the the, the lease of the property along with the, the home. Um, so this letter of intent, are we yes. voting on this, or no. is this a no. separate thing? That's separate from that. Okay, so I need a clarification yeah. to ensure that, that we're not voting on the residential lease, not the letter of intent. It should be the third page. Okay. Yeah, that's the and that's the paragraph that needs. That's why I was confused. Okay, yeah. yes, because yeah. it, no, it's not the letter of intent. Okay. We're voting on the residential, okay. residential yeah. lease. They weren't in that. Yeah, one. you yeah. might state that in the motion, and then the the. Uh, that the Pine uh, family uh, want to rent the, uh, let's see, um, I got the, uh, the house <coughs> on the property and for and it's going to be for an 18 month rolling lease that agrees with the 18 rolling uh, 18 month rolling lease we have on the farm property. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. For $1,200 a month. The only thing that needs changed is that number one, which is the terms and I don't know, I mean, they may come back and say no, but to me that's what we offer them that we'll agree to the 1200 a month and then have it coincide with the 18 month rolling lease. But it has nothing to do with the letter of intent. Okay, so are we going to allow them to um, to sublet the property yeah. in this lease? And uh, I think, oh, I also would like to put in there for $1200 a month plus maintaining the home and grounds. Right, they'll do normal maintenance. I do. Alan, I, I am correct in their uh, original offer included that they would maintain uh, the yard and day-to-day uh, -day maintenance of the house. Is there further discussion on this motion? Chief, could I mention one more? Yes. Uh, I would suggest in that motion, in that deal, if it to include, uh, if, uh, if that's your option, if you wanted to sell it, then the, the money that they put in there would be deducted from price of the sale. But that's your option of whether, if they want to sell it after Okay, if they Six want, months or whatever. Or if we want to sell it. Or yeah, if you all want to sell it. Yeah. To them. If they try. Yeah, to them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm talking I, about? I see. That yeah. It's okay. well, any amount they've paid would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. But, yeah. Be, well, I, yeah. I think if we sell it, it'll be the whole package in that yeah. $1.3 million. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I don't know that that really needs to put in there because well, I they don't buy just the house. Yeah. Well, I'm just They'll telling you everything. that I think that it would be. Something to right. encourage if you that's your option to whether you want to sell it to them or not. Right. Okay. That's your, your choice. You know what I'm talking about? I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Applying the money that's worth is, yes, and that's put up in the next. The next. Yeah, I think that would be something we negotiate in that. It does in number 13 that the tenant will provide all landscape maintenance, including mowing, weed eating, trimming of plant materials, weeding of plant beds, 
at the owner's request and cost, tenant will apply fertilizer and or chemicals to the landscape. So that is covered. So, yeah. Were you adding that to the amendment? No, I'm stating that it's in there, so it's covered. Oh. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Since I don't know all that good about it, from Lynch to, um, would you give me that lease that they said you would offer something that we were going to, who pays the taxes on it? We still, the owner has to pay the taxes. Yeah, we're going to pay taxes now. Well, I know that, but there will be... Right, no, not until they read, purchase it. Uh, read it, and that's what I want, is that you're taxes. I don't know that much about right. this kind of stuff. I, I, if I don't ask, I won't ever know. Does that council member have a comment? Uh, if I wanted to make a <coughs> comment, would it be appropriate to include uh, I maybe item five through five through twenty one or something as uh, of, of the residential lease. I mean, just to put that in the verbiage, say normal maintenance of the house and lot yard, including it's in there. I know, but should I state it uh, including from five to twenty or something? No, I mean the whole. The only thing we're changing is one. Oh, that's the only change. So all that's in there. We're just we're we're, we're approving this residential lease. I know, I know, but, but should, except for one, except the number one, the terms. And that's what we're asking Alan to go back to the pines and change it to a 18 month rolling lease. Well, and but I'm at it. We're also adding the 1,200 1,200 a month and the main the main. It's in there. House and yard. So it's in there. It's all, I know it's all in there. Is it even necessary for me to write that no, or not? No, no, okay. All we're changing, all we're saying all is we're the role changing is the terms. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's what I'll take out then. I'll take that off. So I don't see anything in this that um, that addresses if the payment is not paid, the rent. Yeah, the only nice. thing, the only thing that says is that if there's been a fight of a non-payment, it'll be turned over to the credit. But I don't see number four number on the late charges. Late charges. Number yeah. So it says the late charge will be assessed of forty dollars. But what if there's no rent paid for three or four months? There's no recourse in this. Well, yeah, would you want to arrive at course client Well, yeah. I think. Wait, where did I see that? There is a um, right of entry and inspection, not forcible entry. There was some place in 17. 17. You know, there was one I thought said it said eviction. Something was here somewhere. Yes, you're right. If the tenant shall be in default under any provision of this rental agreement, the tenant shall, following written notice specifying such default, one, vacate the lease premises, two, be subject to eviction therefrom, or three, otherwise have the tenant's right terminated all in accordance with the terms of this agreement. So the tenant has a right to sublease this property for five years. So that needs to stay in there, Alan. Yeah. Is that so right? Right, Alan. Yeah. When, Alan, when you do the eighteen month rolling, that part still needs to stay in there, though. Oh yeah. Question been called on this uh, motion from the second. All in favor of the motion. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? I voted no. You voted no? Aye. Aye. Okay. Six, six to one. Yeah. Let the record show.
Stewart, so six years won't know. Do I hear further new business? We still have the letter of intent that we need to, under the same line item. Uh, yeah. The uh, letter of intent. So far as I can tell, they're they're asking for that they have a letter of intent to negotiate a option to buy the property for five years. I showed it to David McCullough and his comment was they're not a, they're not offered to pay you anything for this option. I wouldn't uh, do it in any manner is what Dave said. Right, tell me a uh, Certainly there's money involved with an option to purchase, and theirs doesn't. Plus it means we could do nothing with it. They want this now changed to a five-year lease instead of the 18-month rolling lease, which means that we could do nothing for five years. We couldn't continue with the project we have going for that property. And then they say the purchase price will be $1,373,000. At the end, that'll be their option at the end of five years, but they don't have to do it. Now, to me, if they want that option, they need to talk some cash up front. But I, I can't see the way. Is that good faith money or? Well, yeah, like uh, escrow or something. Well, like or it, but it, we get it in our hands. We get it in our hands, hands. yes. Yeah. Right. And, and if they don't buy it, we'll deposit. You know, it's non refundable. Uh, would a discretional use deposit be an appropriate funding? saying that uh, that's what the, that's what David said or not. It, how did David say that? I gotta have some verbiage. Well it's not earnest money, so Yeah, I think it would be just considered just a payment is what it, it would be that a would payment. be non refundable. Oh, okay. Yeah I'm not David, what David said was But they're not offering that in this letter of intent. There's no no down payment yeah. being offered. There's, there's nothing being offered as what they right. would say. Right. <laughs> it's basically a five-year lease that they're locked in to give them the ability to lease that property for five years. Whenever we just determined that they, we would allow them to have an 18-month rolling lease. So that would be very contradictory to what we just right. voted on. Nobody trying to uh, But what they want to do now is find there it says extend the east side to a 24-month rolling lease and the wife's side to a 15-month rolling lease. But yet they want the five-year option. So it doesn't make sense to me. Well, they're open to be able to continue their side of bond for another five years instead of 18 months, if we so choose. Right, right. The letter of intent just says five years. Yeah. Um, then they've got this memo to us that talks about the, I guess if we didn't do that, changing it to a 24 month rolling lease, which, and changing the west side to 15 month, and I'm totally against that also. <clears throat> so, well, are you, uh, are we saying that we're going to go back and say what we will do if they will, if they will do a non-refundable uh, down payment? Well, I just think, I mean, I don't know. To me, we go back and tell them this is not acceptable. That's what I mean. Is somebody yeah. going to do that? I mean, I, I don't know if we want to throw a mail out there. Like a 1%. <laughs> oh. my, my personal opinion is if they want to buy back their property, come forth with the, with the money. Okay. Well, that's what I wrote down. So I just think that's okay. They want to bring us a check, I'm all for it. Have them put in the option. We're doing the same thing in Leavenworth. 
We put an option on that. But you had to put money down, right? Yeah, we had to put money down. Uh, That's what I mean. They have a donor. You're yeah. right. It, right. And it's fairly substantial money, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And okay. that, I, I said they want to put 500 grand down yeah. on an option? Fine. That, that, I would take that. I wouldn't take 5,000. Yeah. I was thinking well, whatever, that a, one, one percent would be like 130,000 or something. Mm -hmm. what, is that what? It'd be I think a, typically it's about 5% is what that's just for a yeah. percent of a million is what, 5,000? We need to move on. I don't, yeah. 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 I, I just think I, we don't have I'm to. Gonna, I'm going to vote against their letter of intent. <laughs> We're not even going to vote on this because you're going to go back. I, yeah. I, I just think we go back to them. We're just discussing it. Yeah. 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 Make a motion we adjourn. Motion been made to adjourn. Second. All second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.